All right, guys. We're going to cut up this four liter head. Now, it may be difficult for you guys to see, but there's a magic marker line this way because you want to cut the port. This is the center of the port here. You see it's how it's twisted a little bit. And there's another line this way because the exhaust is actually twisted this way. Actually, if you really want to know, the port is hooked like a J. Okay, I've got my old porter band. Let me grab a little bit of wax because you always want to put a little wax on the, on the blade. Of course, I'm on the wrong side to see where I'm going, but we'll see what we can do. Now, with the, uh, the porta band, you have to use the stop because if it grabs, the whole thing will jerk forward. And now it's it's not easy because you've got a bunch of different things in the way. I think I'm going to move a little bit so I can clear that valve brush a little bit. Okay, I was only able to cut to here. So you almost always have to reverse it and cut it from the other side. I've got this on my old rigid uh, tri stand that I've had since I, don't know, I was a teenager. It's really good for something that's misshapen like a cylinder head because it's got a chain on it design has been around since the 18 somethings and I don't think they've changed it a bit you know why because it works really well that's why okay now to try to plan an intersect course is not the easiest thing in the world
got to take it off. Take it out easy, otherwise you'll pull it right off the wheels. Okay, we didn't do too bad. Let me grab a hammer. I'll pause you guys. Okay, guys, you're back. Little trouble seeing what's on the camera but you get the idea yeah I didn't line it up perfect but that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good cutaway they gave us a ton of metal on the short side Wow notice how flat that port is it has a flat flat valve angle which of course what that means is the air has to turn even harder right all right I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the exhaust how many minutes in are we? Alright guys, let's cut the other side. Hopefully we have as good a walk. The blade is not perfect. And of course, I didn't bring any extra blades from storage. Okay, so this cut got to be on an angle this way. Notice I'm doing this on the grass and not on the driveway, right guys? Why would I do that? With that much cast iron dust, I have a huge rust stain on the driveway. The driveway looks bad enough the way it is. So, let's not do that. Interesting how they did the exhaust port on this. This is a later model, had the, the newer the older models had much bigger exhaust ports. You can see the uh, manifold interface is absolutely huge compared to the exhaust port. Way too big for an engine this big. That's why they shrunk. That's why they shrunk the port. But they left the uh, they left the exhaust manifold the same size. They have huge anti-reversion. What's happening in three minutes? They have a shuttle launch. Oh, cool! We got a shuttle launch. Three minutes. I gotta finish this up in three minutes, guys. Okay.
I should go. Wow, what a piece of crap. I've seen worse. Reminds me of a, a Volkswagen 8-valve exhaust port, actually. Pretty horrendous. You guys can probably see. Cracks. Came cracked in the factory. I joke, but so many of them are cracked, it's ridiculous. So that's the reason this uh, we have these heads is because they cracked and failed. And uh, my buddy Jeff said, hey, you want these? I said, sure, we'll do something with them. Let's see if we can get that, catch that uh, rocket launch. Well, I don't see it flying, so it probably got scrubbed. Kind of interesting to look at them. Very, a very short height cylinder head, which is not great for the ports. Look at the angle of that port. It's completely flat, valve angle. The short side radius is really tight. If you actually take a look, the port, the port is designed this way and then turns. Let's see if we can get the other side up. The other side's on the on the, the workbench. It's got a decent amount of cast iron around it. If you wanted to put a bigger bowl in there, you could. Oh there we go. We did have a launch today. It's pretty cool to watch. Notice you can't hear anything. We're so far away. Literally by the time we hear it, you can hardly see it. It's rocket science, guys. It is rocket science. Now, if you could see really, really well, you can see the cones in that uh, exhaust trail. That's kind of cool. Tell me what those cones are, are from. And uh, to get back to this rocket science here. Believe it or not, I looked up on Stan Weiss's site. They actually have flow numbers on these heads. And uh, ported ones. They get like 235 and 170 something. 170 something. They're going to they're gonna be taking this, this port up quite a bit. I mean, it's got about 200,000 of roof, roof room here you could raise. This, the way they, they made that a trumpet, that really doesn't help. Interesting, right? This port actually reminds me a lot of a Chevy 409 port. If you don't know what a Chevy 409 is, it's really the uh, bastard brother of, uh, of small block and big block. It's right between them. It has like some small block attributes. It's got some big block attributes, but it's got a, it's got a port very much like this. Very flat valve angle. It's got a nice high short, ra short side radius. The bowl was way too straight. Take a look at, take a look at where the fuel hits right at the back of this bowl and makes it clean. That's from the factory. Take a look at how this is completely shrouded. All right, guys, 17 minutes and change. We're done for tonight. Hope you enjoyed this, even though if I was you, I'd probably fast forward through most of it. Can't really blame you. In any case, it was fun doing. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for hanging out.
I'm not sure if you can hear it now. It sounds like thunder in the background. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.